Welcome to the Spiritual Life Management Podcast, where we help you bring balance in your life and live to your fullest potential with your host, Gretchen Smith. Welcome everyone to a very special and dear to my heart episode of the Spiritual Life Management Podcast. I'm honored to have a very special guest on my show today, Stacy Overman. Stacy is a spiritual coach, author, speaker, and leading edge thought leader, guiding successful faith-centered professional women that feel they are deeply unhappy in their marriage, disconnected, and unfulfilled. Stacy shares God's divine teachings and love shared from the angels with those that are ready to receive. Stacy began experiencing supernatural encounters with angels during her battle with breast cancer in 2006. She has intimately shared her cancer journey and the messages that she's received from angels in her book, which is Angel Kisses No More Cancer, and her journal, Angel Kisses Every Day. Stacy also has an enlightening and transformational coaching program, which is Your Great Assignment, and it's packed full of live workshops and retreats. Stacy is a beautiful soul with very special gifts, as well as an amazing teacher. I've known Stacy for a great deal of time. I consider her my friend, mentor, and soul sister. And I have personally gone through one of her programs so I can attest to her talents. I've experienced some life-changing and transformation in my life as a result. And I thank you, Stacy. Welcome to the show, Stacy. Thank you, Gretchen. I am so honored to be here and I'm so proud of you. Look at you go, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I love it. Uh, Thank you. So we are currently in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and there couldn't be a more perfect time to have you on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. So I thought, you know, whether the listeners are currently battling illness or have loved ones that are, or perhaps you just want a little guidance in your life because you're going through a dark time or a difficult time, that your book is a must read. So I wanted to bring you on the show and definitely have you talk a little bit about your book, about your challenges and experiences and breakthroughs you've had in your life with breast cancer. And I believe you are now celebrating 14 years in remission. So congratulations. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I don't know where the time is gone, but I am so grateful for 14 years in remission. I can remember when just getting to that five-year marker was nail-biting and it was like, oh, please, God, please, please let the tests be good. You know, it's, whew, it's a journey for sure. I obviously can't speak from personal experience, but am absolutely a journey. And I have to say that we are blessed that you have really gone to heart and shared your experience with those of us that can read your book. And if you don't mind, I'd like to read just a short little passage from your book for the listeners. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So it reads, I'm going to let you peek at my soul. There is a lot more to this story than just my journey with cancer. Everything changed after that. I mean, everything. I'm not the same person I was before. I mean that on so many levels, physical, emotional, spiritual, especially spiritual. I'm a whole new me. Okay, I will just come right out and say it. Coming so close to death brought me closer to my angels. I can communicate with them in ways I never before dreamed. They speak to me and through me now. I see them. I hear them. I feel them. And that is the end of the passage. Wow. I have goosebumps all over. (laughs) I do too. I do too. I've read your book before and Mm -hmm. I reread it. And each time I read that passage, I have goosebumps. Wow. It's just so moving. So Tell us, absolutely. Tell us, first of all, how did you come up with the name of your book? Oh, I love this. Um, We were living in Texas at the time, my husband now and I, and one morning I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I just had the most amazing, profound dream. I was dreaming of 
someone speaking to me, telling me this phrase, angel kisses, no more cancer. And I wrote it down as fast as I could. I told my husband about it and I said, I don't know if that's supposed to be the name of my book or if that's supposed to be the name of my YouTube channel or or a Facebook group. I don't know. And so I started like naming almost everything after angel kisses and then adding the caveat of no more cancer. And it took me a few years. It was that was actually about the same time I started writing my book. So, you know, this goes in is 2020s hindsight, right? It's like what I teach in my coaching programs, trust and allow, trust and allow. Well, back then I was learning how to trust. I should have trusted that my first instinct was it was going to be the name of my book. But I doubted and I wondered <laughs> and I plathered it everywhere. When in reality, a few years later, I shared that with my editor of my book. And I said, well, I have a few title names, but this one was at the top. And I, again, was doubting it. And they were like, that is amazing. That's awesome. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Why did I not just trust in the beginning? <laughs> right. So that was how that came to fruition was through a dream. Oh, that's so beautiful. So tell me, how in the world did you start hearing angels? You said through your, your cancer journey, yes. you began to hear angels. Yes. Um, it first started out, uh, well, let's see, how do I say this? So let me back up just a smidge. I had my first cancer surgery with a near-death experience, and no, I didn't see Jesus or I didn't hear anything said to me. I just experienced that white light tunnel and then rushing back to my body. But things changed after that, and after that, my intuition was off the charts. I was getting information, wisdom, and knowledge that I shouldn't have known, like I needed to go into this particular store right now. And I can remember back then I was working in the real estate industry in Oregon and I'm, I'm bald. I have my business suit on and I'm going to my client's offices. And I thought, what? This store right now? And I look at my watch and I'm like, well, I guess I could call it my lunch break. So I park the car. I go in there. I walk to the back to look at the things that I would normally look at. And I'm thinking... I really don't need to be here. So I start to leave. Right as I get right after the checkouts, this woman stops me. Of course, I'm like a beacon light, you know, flashing with my bald head. But she comes up to me and strikes up this conversation that her sister was just diagnosed with breast cancer and she lives in another state. And this, this poor gal was grieving and sad that she could not go to that other state to help her sister. And she was asking me, what can I do for her sister from afar? And long story short, I gave her some advice, hugs and comfort, got out to my car and I was sitting there going, wow, that was a divine appointed moment. And if I hadn't listened to go into that store when I did, I would have missed it. So those experiences started happening left and right. They were even starting to happen more and more for my late husband that I was married to at the time. We were both battling cancer. And we were just like, I don't know, kingdom workers, just hearing the call and going and doing it. And it was amazing. Well, I realize now that that was God sending messages through the angels to me. But it wasn't until my late husband was on hospice. And this was almost two years into my own battle. And I was sitting at home on the bed working on my laptop and he was taking a nap next to me. And this was the last week he was actually coherent before he passed. I'm typing on my computer and out of my peripheral vision, I see angels and beings from heaven lining up around our bed. Now, mind you, I'm freaking out <laughs> because I don't know what to do with this. I've never experienced it, or at least, you know, I hadn't thought I had. We're on a third story floor in our home. So any kind of shadows would have been created by a bird flying across like the window area. When I looked straight at it, I couldn't see the angel. When I stayed looking at my computer, I could see the angels and the beings from heaven in our room out of my peripheral vision. And the angels, mind you, are huge. Like 
they didn't care that there was a ceiling. I could see that they were even taller than the ceiling. I even emailed my oncologist nurse and I told her exactly what I was seeing. I wish I had that email address still in connection to that because I would love to have screenshotted that, but you know, hindsight. <laughs> she happened to be sitting at the oncology desk and emailed right back and said, this is normal for caregivers to experience this as their loved ones begin to transition. And I was so grateful she emailed right back. When Hank woke up, my husband at the time, instead of telling him what I experienced, I asked him if he had had any dreams. He dreamt about the beings that I seen and he explained and told me all about them. And I about fell out. I fell, almost fell out of the bed. I was just like, are you kidding me? Like this, I seen it. I seen it. Mm -hmm. So that was my first realization of seeing the angels. And I felt an overwhelming peace and calmness and love. I was afraid because my human mind was just like, whoa, is this really happening? <laughs> but it took that time and multiple times after that for me to start really understanding why it's happening and what do I do with this? And then I started learning how to trust and allow and started receiving messages that, oh, I'm here to share this with the world and that it is normal, that we do have spiritual gifts, that some of us can see this and some of us can hear God's voice clearly. So that's the beginning of it. And that's such a beautiful, miraculous story. It's just amazing. Do you think that anyone can hear God's voice or the angels? I truly believe that everyone can hear God's voice. However, there's things that hold us back and block us from hearing God's voice. Now, hearing angels as well, I do believe that we can as well. Angels are God's messengers. And so if God has something to share with you, he may just come right out and have that booming voice and share his self, or he may try to work a, work a way around to send it through an angel or even sometimes Jesus, like I've actually experienced encounters with Jesus as well. The things that I find most of my clients and people that I talk to that s think they should, I should say, think they can't hear or sense or feel is they're experiencing some form of a block. You know, it's sometimes more often than not, it's a limiting belief that I'm not worthy of being able to communicate or hear from God, or maybe they were raised in an environment that the belief structure was that that just isn't possible, right? And so we get stuck around that belief. And until we can heal that belief, it's going to be really hard to heal or to hear the God's voice, if that makes sense. I mean, I know you've gone through my program about healing and removing the blocks, but does, right, right? right? Make sense? <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely <laughs> makes sense, 100%. Yeah. And the other thing, you know, yeah. around limiting beliefs, if we're trying to hear God's voice, is even in my coaching programs, like I teach people how to find those inner core wounds that create the limiting belief, because then that limiting belief is what creates our thoughts. That's what creates our feelings, and that's what creates our habits, and that's what gives us our results. And so when we can go back to find the root cause of what's blocking you, that's when we can hear God clearly. And that's how we can start that relationship is by doing the inner work on ourself. So yes, absolutely, 100%, I believe everyone can hear God's voice. Wonderful. I absolutely agree. I've experienced it myself, uh, thanks to you and your program. So I just, it's just a magical experience. How do you think the angels have helped you in communicating with others uh, as far as going through the cancer process or shaping a better life for ourselves? Mm. You know, the one thing that I heard over and over from the angels is how important it is to take care of our our vehicle. They call it our vehicle, our body. Because if we're not taking care of this vessel, our body, we can't fulfill our soul's purpose, what God had you come here for? And so it really, I think, helped not only me, but by me being able to teach that, it helps so many people understand, you know, 
if we take care of our body, we don't have to hear those words, we have cancer. If we're taking care and doing the inner soul work on a mind, body, and soul level, we are at our optimal health so that we can do what we came here to do. And obviously it's free will and we all have a choice. It's like, oh, if God calls you to do something, like you could say no, <laughs> or you can say right. yes, right? Like, and there's a lot of people mm -hmm. that say no, no, thank you. I don't know if they consciously realize that they are, but we have a choice. And so I think it's really important. The message that's in my book from the angels, from God is we have to learn to take care of ourselves or we're no good to anyone, right? Yes. If we're not taking care of us and making sure that we're at an optimal health on a mental standpoint, on an emotional standpoint, and a physical standpoint, we truly can't bless others and make an impact in the world as much as we had an agreement with God to do in this life. So very important. And I think it's inspirational to understand too, like if you've already been diagnosed with a form of disease, Obviously, we need medical attention, right? We do have the capability of doing healing on our body with God's help. But if you catch it before it's gone clear to a diagnosis, right? Like, I mean, once I got breast cancer, of course, I had to do something. I needed medical attention because it had gone too far. But if we catch it when it's just a disruption, just a dis-ease within the physical body, that's when we can actually turn the ship and start healing on a mind, body, and soul level so that we don't have to get an official diagnosis. Unfortunately, this world, we all just like go to the very end. And next thing you know, many, many, many Americans, people all worldwide are getting these diagnoses of disease because they're not taking care of themselves. You know, they're overworking they're putting their self last. Yes. And especially women. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I can attest to that. Yep. I, I know full well what that's all about. And at some point we have to we have to have that wake up call, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, to really notice that we need to take time to slow down and get back to the mind, the body, and the soul. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hundred <laughs> percent. Can you share with our listeners a bit about your course, your great assignment? I know it's packed full of all kinds of good information, workshops, and retreats, but what else might they expect to get out of this course? Oh, absolutely. Well, in conjunction with listening to what God wanted me to share with people, this coaching program, you're, it's not just a course where you take the videos and you're on your own. It's literally a nine weeks of personal coaching with me, plus you get the videos and the handouts and we work together. But it's really understanding what your sacred pilgrimage is on earth. What stage are you in? Like for example, stage one, you may be able to recognize in other people more than you can recognize it in yourself. And stage one is all about happening to me kind of feel where we're the victim. And it's so easy to notice it in someone else. I mean, if, for example, at work, the person that is blaming everything of why they don't have this or why this isn't done on everyone or everything else, right? We all have heard that, but sometimes we don't see it in ourselves. And when we're blaming everything else in our life for where we're at, that's a sign that you're in stage one of your sacred pilgrimage here on earth. And in order to move to the next stage, we have to be willing to release what no longer serves us, which is releasing the blame and starting to take responsibility for our share of what's going on in our life. And so I talk about the five stages on your journey and how to move to the next stage and how to start healing and releasing so that you can move through those stages quicker rather than 15, 20 years or a lifetime. Then, right. then we move into my deep soul healing process, which is a six step healing process so that you can start removing those limiting beliefs that are holding you back. And this process is what changes your life, like takes you from victimhood to co-creator in your reality. 
Yeah, this is what makes it so that you can hear God's voice clearly. You can have an experience encounter with Jesus or the angels. And you're removing the masks so that you can find who you truly are and understand what God's called you to do. We then move into understanding what your supernatural gifts are. We all have some, right? Like, so it's just really identifying what is that and then learning how to communicate your gift in the world. And then the last thing, like we've, well, not quite the last thing, but the next thing we move into is how to have soulful relationships. Because a lot of my clients are corporate professional women, but they're unhappy in their long-term relationship. And if we're really being honest, they've been feeling like roommates for quite some time. And so soulful relationships is so important of how to keep those biblical boundaries and how to keep you from getting sucked back into the things that you were in, right? So if we're trying to be our true authentic self, we have to learn and relearn how to have a soulful relationship that you're not getting walked on again, if that makes sense, right? Right. No, absolutely. We don't want to be the doormat again. We don't want to have to walk on eggshells. No, No, we don't. It's like enough. We want to live our... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We, we got to be able to Absolutely. say no. We have to be able to say no sometimes. So we have to learn how to do that. We really do. It's like a whole new training thing. And then we move into stepping into our way shower path. So many of us also have this nudging feeling we're here for something more. And we can't quite figure it out. We can't put our finger on it, but we know. We look at our corporate job. We look at our unhappy marriage and we're like, God, really? Is this all there is? There's got to be something more I'm here to do. Well, when you realize your story, where you came from, the wounds, the trauma, and how you heal from that, that's when you realize and you start to remember what makes your heart sing, what lights you up. And so we start putting you into how do I align with my soul's purpose? on this journey. And then lastly, like the bonus gift I'm giving at the very end is how to hear God's voice clearly so they can make the right decisions. Because honestly, sometimes these women that are coming to me are like, I just want to do what God wants me to do. And I don't know if I'm supposed to make this marriage work. I don't know if I'm supposed to stay. And honestly, like the majority of the gals that I work with, beautiful women, they're They come to me wanting almost like somebody to tell them what to do, but they don't get that. Mm -hmm. What they get is they get that whole information for themselves because they've worked on them. And all of a sudden it's like, you know what? I am supposed to leave the marriage or some of them are like, wow, my marriage got stronger, but they choose, right? It's like, I will never tell them, but they learn how to listen and they learn how to make right. those decisions on their own and they feel good about it because they're being their true authentic self. So that's a nutshell of my new program. Which is beautiful and absolutely transformational. And I can attest to working with Stacy. And in my situation, it wasn't necessarily so much about my marriage, but it was about knowing that I wasn't really on the right path with what I was doing in life, my career yeah. and how I was living my life you know, not having that balance in my life. And once you, if you will, awaken to your authentic self and what truly makes your heart sing, Mm -hmm. as you said, because trust me, I was just kind of going through life with blinders on, working as many hours as possible and not really awake to what was going on around me as far as the quality Mm -hmm. of life. Once you wake up to that, Life couldn't be more beautiful on so many different levels. And I so remember our first conversation. You were like, oh, I feel like corporate America is sucking my soul out. And I'm like, oh, we've got to change that. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And then once I woke up, really, truly woke up and discovered my passions and my soul purpose and still working in corporate America, it was really hard to go to work Mm -hmm. every day. But I was just trying to find that one area that I could shine my light Mm -hmm. on, whether it was an employee or a situation and make it more meaningful. 
And that's what got me through until I, I hung up my hat, which happened quite fast, actually. <laughs> Retirement happened quite yeah. fast. So expect some miraculous changes in your life if you go through her exactly, program. Exactly, exactly. And some people, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, well, I don't want to quit my job. Or you, it, I want you to know, like, you don't have to make drastic decisions. Sometimes you can just be God's light and love in whatever situation you're in. But then there's some of us that I work with that feel called to do more. And so those are the gals that will enroll in my mastermind program that's a year long. And I actually pull back the veil and show them everything, how to start their business as a side hustle for a while. And as they build their confidence and their clients, it's like then they can go out and make those those drastic decisions like, yep, I'm ready to quit that day job, right? Like that career because God's calling them to something different. So it's amazing. It's amazing. Right. I think right now, especially with COVID and so many different changes going on in the world, this couldn't be a more profound time to enroll in your great assignment course. Mm -hmm. There's so much opportunity for people, especially if they're really struggling with, you know, some of the life changes that they may have faced this year or different challenges. Absolutely. Well, and you know, I, I even commented on a few of my live videos and posts that I've shared this year was when COVID hit, I felt like God put us in a timeout. <laughs> it was like, everyone to your room, yes. go. <laughs> And yep. while we're sitting there, right, like thinking about myself as a child in my timeout room, you have time to think, you have time to reflect, you can look back on your life. You, it's like a life review time. Am I happy? Is this where I want to be? Is there something more? Like all of those questions start crossing our mind and anything that was not quite right possibly in a marriage or a situation at home and you're stuck there, I'm sure that the light really shone on that and it either got worse or it got better. And so that was just a huge time for us to all reflect on what is truly important in my life. And I know God stirred my soul during that time and lots of things changed for me as well and in my business. And I was like, okay, God, I am listening. I hear you. Okay, I'm doing it. So I think there's millions of people going through that same thing. And this would be a great program for them to jump into because boy, what a better way to figure it out in nine weeks rather than wait two, three, four years or more to get it figured out. Right. So I want to circle back to your book real quickly. I want to say and share with the listeners that I really love the way that Stacy's book is laid out, the format of the book. It has her personal journey, her personal story with cancer, and it's very raw. And as she says, she really bears her soul and puts it all out there for all of us to go on this journey with her. It's captivating and inspiring and motivational. But also at the end of each chapter, there's a message from the angels, which is so inspiring. And I believe at one point in one of the chapters, it may be towards the back of the book, there is a message from the angels that talks about when we're going through times that are really difficult in our life, whether it be cancer, another illness, or maybe a job loss, something really challenging, that it's God's way of steering us back on track. Yeah. It's the soul's journey and the way of getting us back on track with our life. And sometimes we need those major road bumps to get us yeah. there. Do you have any thoughts on uh, that? Well, and it's kind of like what you said earlier on, like when you woke up, sometimes we have to hit those potholes to wake us up. You know, when you've been on a long drive and it's just monotony and you're just kind of you're, you're driving, but you're not really awake. And then you hit that pothole and you're like, whoa, everything's heightened, your senses, everything. I really feel like it's a wake up. And this COVID, I think God used a lot of things for good with all of this to wake people up and to shake people up. And so even, even if you did have a diagnosis, it wakes you up, right? If you become ultra sensitive to everything, you are in tune. And you may never have been in tune with your body at all. And all of a sudden now, what, what are you doing? You're focusing on your body. You're focusing on what's going on. You're focusing on that healing. So it's a shakeup 
to wake up. I really believe that. I love that. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I love when you share parts of my book. I'm like, wow, I hadn't even, I hadn't listened to that part for a while. (laughs) So good. It's true. It's so true. You know, I I really wanted to share this book. Yes, it is about your cancer journey, but it is so much more. And I think that everybody could gain something out of reading the book. Absolutely. There's no question about it. Yes. And I love, boy, if you get the book message me on Facebook and tell me how it impacted your life, right? Like, oh, I just love it. It's so great to hear the testimonials of what they got out of it. Tell us a little more about the uh, the journal and how we can use the journal. Beautiful. Yes. Well, the journal, we pulled some of the uh, angel messages out of the book, and then we moved them to the journal spot so that there's a daily place for you to check off. Did you pray? Did you meditate? And I encourage, you know, meditating on God's promises and meditation to me is like listening. Prayer is sending up your prayers of gratitude and your um, what you're wanting God to to help you with, but then meditation is really soaking it in and learning how to listen to the response. And so there's little check marks that you can check off that, yes, I did that today. And then I always encourage people, you know, call in God or call in Jesus or call in the angels, whoever you feel that um, you can hear the message best from. And then place a question at the top of the page in that journal that you want to ask. And then in meditation, listen for the answer and then share in the journal what you got. There's one gal that took my mini course, um, how to communicate with angels. And I teach how to use the journal with that. And she says, I will never journal the same way ever. I used to rant and vent and let it all out in my journal, which on one hand is good because it's a form of releasing, but she says now, Mm -hmm. I'm journaling all of this amazing, beautiful messages that I'm feeling, sensing, hearing, and asking God, you know, what does he want me to hear today or want me to understand? And she said it's really changed her whole perspective on how to journal. And so that was really nice to see um, one of my clients say that about the journal. So you can take the course, do the um, journal with it, or you can just journal on your own and do the journaling however you enjoy journaling. But it's nice to read the message from the angels and see how does that pertain to my day today? Yes. I think you can gather so much information from your angels, but you just, you have to ask and you have to be willing to open. And of course, if you are interested in working with angels or learning more, I believe Stacy covers a lot of that in her yes, course. Absolutely. I, it's a mini course actually that's up on my website. And that one, you, you have seven beautiful videos that walks you step by step of exactly how to communicate with the angels. And it is life-changing too. It's, it's a really quick, simple course. And people are loving that one too. Oh, wonderful. So let's dive into that just a little bit and talk about where people can connect with you. If you're wanting to just get your feet wet, Mm -hmm. you have a great Facebook group, which is Understanding Divine Messages. But where else can people connect with you at? Absolutely. My website is my first and last name, stacyoverman.com. And I've got a blog there. I've, I've got the shop there where you can actually find the angel course. And there's a link there if you think, you know what, I'd like to take it a little further and see about working with you inside your great assignment coaching program. You can click and we can set up a call to chat. And how long are those calls and do they cost oh, anything? Oh, absolutely free. They're complimentary. It's really, we just want to see, is this a good fit for us to work together? Can I truly help you? And, and listen to what God's got in, in store for our conversation. I really like to listen to that. And if it makes sense for you to move forward, after about 45 minutes, we've got a good grasp of things but they usually don't last much more than an hour. And then the next step is we'd enroll you in my coaching program or we find that, nope, that's not quite right. And that's okay too. Okay. And are the courses self-paced? Perfect. Well, the coaching program, The Great Assignment, is paced over nine weeks. And so the videos become available about every 12 hours 
in week one and then it moves to week two in the same process and we move through it in small groups. I actually will put just small groups together so that we can work together on it and we'll have a weekly call together so that you can actually ask questions and sometimes somebody else ask a question that you're like, oh, I never thought of that. That's so helpful. So I really think that the group coaching is very important on this journey and it also helps us to come out of hiding. (laughs) <laughs> when we have other people to talk to. <laughs> um, and so that one is a nine week program that we have spaced it out accordingly. So you'll be able to finish it in nine weeks and then you get the videos forever after that. The angel, how to communicate with angels course, it's seven videos and they open up every 24 hours and you'd have that done within a week, but it, you work at your own pace. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And can you share with us the biggest dramatic shifts your clients have experienced by taking your courses? Oh my gosh. Let's see. Who do I say first? (laughs) Well, you're a prime example. Like you did so much amazing healing and shifts that you were able to turn in your retirement papers and look at you now. Like I'm so proud of you. It just makes me grin ear to ear. Thank you. Um, I've had other people where their health has gotten better. I have a beautiful client named Debbie that started the program and she had MS and was having a really tough time with her legs not working the way she'd like them to. And, And as she went through the program and started doing the inner work and the deep soul healing, her body started getting better to where she wasn't having to use like the wheelchair as often as as she was. And I've had another couple of gals that experienced lupus and their lupus started to get better. Let's see, I've had marriages get better. I can remember this sweet Kristen. She says, wow, I never came to you with a marriage issue, but I didn't realize working on myself and doing that deep soul healing work that my marriage would get better. And that was beautiful. Gads. Yeah, there's just so many. There's so many. A lot of women just really come out of their shell. They come out of hiding. They find who they really are. And they're living with more peace, love, and happiness in their life, being their true authentic self. And that's, I'm so, I I could cry over all those kind of things. You know, it's just amazing. It's beautiful. Right. Oh, sounds amazing. And I actually do know a few people that have gone through Stacy's programs that have experienced some transformational experiences that have been just, oh, I, awe inspiring. I don't even have I words know, for it's it. Hard. So I can definitely attest to that. It's really, really hard, it's like right? One thing. So, yeah. I know, I know. And I don't, you know, we don't want to get too personal about people's changes either, but I can assure you that if this sounds like something for you, that you should definitely give Stacy a call, schedule a call with Stacy. And again, get her book, Angel Kisses, No More Cancer, because it is amazing, absolutely amazing. And I can assure you that regardless of your circumstances or what you're going through right now, you will find some inspiration in this book. That is for certain. So Stacy, any closing words for our mm. listeners? You know, the big thing that just kind of keeps coming through while we're talking is I feel like God's just really reminding you that he's got big plans for you. He's not done. He's got big plans for you. And know that you are worthy of being able to be that light to help impact the world. You just got to work on you and heal you so that you're okay. And it's okay to take that time for you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. I really appreciate that. Thank you for having me. It's been awesome. Absolutely. So thank you, Stacy. Again, I am going to put all kinds of links in the show notes. I'll have Stacy's Angel Kisses No More Cancer book down there, where you can find the journal, her website. And if you'd like to follow Stacy, which she has some wonderful posts, very inspiring, encouraging posts on social media. I urge you to connect with her on all of her social platforms. So I'll have that for you as well. And I just thank you from the bottom of my heart, Stacy for sharing your information and words of wisdom with all of the listeners. So thank Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to the Spiritual Life Management Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. It really helps us reach more listeners. If you want to connect, please drop your comments below or visit GretchenSmithCoaching.com. 
You can also follow me on Instagram at Gretchen Smith Coaching or Facebook at Spiritual Life Management. Additional information on this episode can be found below in the show notes.